Hello and welcome to Born This Way. My name is Tilly Fox and I'll be guiding you all throughout the information with Clapper. We'll be talking about the good stages and all the bad stages, some of which is more personal and other parts could just be useful when your child is born. Coming up we have myself talking about my personal story with Clapper, having been born with a cleft palate, plus we have a special guest who is my mum who will be talking about my experiences and her experience with Clapper and looking after me as a child. Clapper was set up in 1974 as a partnership between people who were affected by cleft lips and palates and the health professionals and it was run entirely by volunteers up until 1995 when Gareth Davies was appointed CEO of the charity. Running through a few important dates, in 1997 they established their main aim for the charity which was counselling and support Plus, they registered with a charity commission the same year. In 1981, they published their first books to help parents. They were called Help for Parents and Help with Feeding, both of which can be found on the Clapper website for a small price between three to two pounds. All the money, of course, will be going to the charity as a donation. In 1986, Jan Robertson started selling specialist bottles for the children born into the cleft community. The range of bottle has broadened hugely throughout the years, giving parents more of a variety to choose on what they purchase. Gareth Davies was appointed Chief Executive in 1995, giving the charity more of a national focus. In August 2004, it saw changes in the governing documents, causing the organisation to re-register with the company's house. Then in February 2005, Clapper re-registered with charity commissions. Ever since 1974, Clapper have been the only cleft charity in the UK which has been respected by the cleft community from day one. Within the first few hours of your baby being born, you'll receive a lot of help and support from the nurses and doctors at your hospital. They will talk you through what your next steps will be and the relevant operations your child will need. An estimate of 1,200 children every year are born into the world with a cleft lip or palate and the staff at the hospitals are very well trained, leaving you slightly less worried and more relaxed about each of the procedures. Both the lip and the palate operations happen because of the tissue that doesn't join together in the womb. When it comes to repairing the cleft lip, your baby will only be three months old. This may seem shocking to some of you, but doing the operation on them this young means they will heal a lot faster They'll be in the operating theatre having surgery for one to two hours, yet they'll be taken away from the ward for two to four hours. After the operation, your baby will be left with a slight scar. However, the surgeons try to line the scar up with the natural lines of the lips, making it less noticeable. Repairing the cleft palate takes place between six to 12 months old. Again, this is so it heals a lot faster. The operation takes around two hours again, and your child will be taken from the ward for around three to four hours. During the surgery, the soft palate will be reconstructed and your baby will be left with a scar in the mouth. More often than not, having either clefts comes with having an alveolar bone graft, ABG for short. This occurs when your child is between 8 to 12 years old. This operation is only necessary if the original surgery didn't heal correctly or there are ongoing speech problems. It improves the function of the lips and palate and improves the shape of the nose. Around 500 children have ABG operations each year. Between the ages of 18 months to a recommended age of 21 years old when your child has stopped growing, they will attend regular speech and therapist appointments. Every now and then your child will be given a video fluoroscopy which is a moving x-ray of the palate when your child is talking or making certain sounds. This helps the cleft team see what's going right or wrong with the palate and deals with the problems that need to be dealt with. After any of the two operations, you must only feed your child soft foods, make sure they keep up good oral hygiene, and make sure they do not use straws. Doing all of these will help the wound heal a lot faster. Hearing problems often appear in children that have experienced cleft palates. This is usually called blue ear, where fluids are built up in the ear. Cleft palate repairs sometimes improve the hearing problems on their own. In some cases, a plastic tube called a grommet is placed into the eardrum to drain the fluid from the ear. If the cleft involves the gum area, it's common that the tooth can appear missing, out of position, or even an extra tooth appears in the mouth. Assuming this is the case for you, your child will see 
a paediatric dentist to monitor the health of their teeth and recommend treatment when necessary. There is no single cause to a cleft. A combination of genetic factors and environmental factors can cause it, or it may simply be a one-off. The genetic factor is that the child can inherit this from a parent, and the environmental factors is it can vary from the baby forming incorrectly in the womb, taking a certain medicine, or there's a lack of folic acid. In some cases, a cleft can be caused by 22Q11 deletion syndrome, sometimes called de George, or it can occur from a Piero band sequence. Feeding can be a struggle when the baby is born as they have no or weak sucking reflex causing them to get no milk from their mothers or from a bottle. Clapper of specialist bottles to enable you, you to feed your child. Most of these you are able to get for free in the Clapper Welcome Pack. The man bottle is known as a squeezy bottle and Clapper is the only supplier of man specialist cleft feeding equipment. It comes with three varies of medium flow teats the non-vented newborn teats, and then a vented or non-vented all ages teats. Vented and non-vented depends on how much airflow the teat is letting in when the baby is feeding. However, when using any of the bottles, you must be trained by a cleft specialist. Dr. Brown's bottles are specifically designed and developed with professionals to help babies with feeding issues that occur from the cleft. As the baby can't get the milk squeezed into their mouth with this bottle, they must control the flow themselves by their tongue, just without the sucking reflex. This will come naturally to them as they would normally control getting milk from a bottle or from their mothers this way. This bottle does not need as much training as the man bottle. I am one of the estimated 1,200 children born with a cleft. Mine happens just to be the cleft palate rather than the lip as well. When I was born, the hole was so small that the midwife never actually saw it, which led to me getting no food for around seven days. As soon as my mum realised, the midwife noticed the palate instantly and referred my mum to Clapper, where she received the bottles very quickly. At six months old, I went into the operating theatre for my very first operation, unknowingly the first of many for me. I have had several operations on my left ear caused by a mastoid, a layer of skin over my eardrum and also a collapsed eardrum. Having regular checkups and operations at the hospital for my ear and cleft palate made me and my family feel like it was my second home. Not only did my cleft palate cause ear problems, I actually ended up having six teeth missing from my mouth. I'm not 100% sure if my cleft palate was the reason for this, because missing teeth runs in my family. My last operation to date was the re-repair of my palate when I was 13. At the time I absolutely hated the idea of it, and even after I was discharged from the hospital, I hated it. The pain and the trouble with eating was not the nicest, yet looking back at it now I can see a huge difference. And I am extremely grateful for the doctors and nurses who have helped me through the years. If your child gets offered any palate re repairs, grab it with both hands and do it. The difference it will make to your child is amazing and something you will never regret. I have been very lucky to have my mum talk to me to give you her view on bringing me up with a cleft palate. So, what is your story? What's my story? Well, so you were born, weren't breathing at the very beginning. So the midwives took you off and basically got you breathing again. They said, oh, she'd swallowed her tongue. She's fine, she's fine. So that was our first panic. And then, um, yeah, you then slept and went to feed you and didn't seem to be able to um, satisfy you at all. You always seemed to be hungry and the midwives checked you over couldn't see any problems. 24 hours later and you were still screaming the place down, couldn't feed and so they checked your mouth and found you had got a palate, cleft palate in the soft part which is right at the back so it was only a tiny one and they think now that you would probably had your tongue in the roof of your mouth. So how easy would you say it was to get help from Claire? Oh, they were amazing. Um, went home, we thought we'd got 
we thought we'd sorted the feeding problem with you but worked out you were still not feeding so you actually hadn't had any food for about five five to seven days really um, so you were losing weight weight rather than putting on and I was told about Clapper, Cleft Lip and Palate Association and I contacted them and within 24 hours I had a set of squeezy bottles which are special bottles that you feed babies with cleft palates so they can't suck so I used to have to squeeze the milk into you um, oh yeah they were there for me I was so relieved when I got these bottles very emotional time mm -hmm. how prompt would you say they were helping you oh literally there I, I reckon it was probably in the evening when I contacted them and I had the bottles on the doorstep the next morning. They were amazing. Um, so you said you found out about the Cleft Lip and Palate Association by the hospital, was it? Yes, it was, yeah. Um, did you know about them before? No, I'd never heard of them. And in fact, I knew about Cleft Lip, Lips and Palates. I'd seen them before, but I actually didn't really know to what extent it affected the child so whether it was brain damage or anything I didn't realize it was purely um, a deformant really. Was this the first time you've reached out to them? It was the first time I've reached out to them yeah. Do you support Clapper at all? Yes I do. I, um, I'm not a real active member but I like to support them when I can so if I'm ever doing any fundraising or if ever I get a charity come forward to me, I say, you know, no, I actually support Clapper wholeheartedly. All my donations go towards Clapper because without them, I could get quite emotional. Without them, I don't know what I'd have done. They, they were just there for me. So, yes, I like to, if any fundraising is to be done, I always do it for Clapper. Do you think they're well known to the public? Yeah, you don't necessarily know about them unless you have to. I'd never heard of Cleft Lip and Palate Association. Yeah. Um, and if I ever speak to anybody that, um, if we're ever talking about the situation, they, they don't really know about it. No, I mean, I've spoken to all of my friends and their families, mm. and they have no idea. No, no, because it doesn't concern them, so they don't need to. But it's nice to sort of build awareness in support of them. It's not a massive issue? No. Not really? No. You see so many like animals and humans, I don't know. Mm. Do animals? Yeah. Wow. Dogs do, yeah. I didn't realise that. Yeah. Bless them. And last question, if you were to give out any advice to parents, what would it be? What advice? Use use all the help you can get. I did and as I say you need the you need the support. So if anyone's there to help you then get the help and Clapper were there for me wholeheartedly. As were the hospital and the surgeon, everybody helped me and um, as you know you had your last appointment via video link the other day and it was quite an emotional being signed off from the hospital even though you only see them every now and again it's no, sort of no, saying no. goodbye to it yeah. but yeah because you in the end had two operations didn't you because the first one worked for a while but you needed a second one because there was a little seepage still of that's air enough. yeah that's right and they did warn us that because you're so tiny and it's such an intricate operation that actually you may have needed it again and you actually did. <laughs>